Welcome to episode 116 of Both Down, the number one Blood Bowl podcast in the land of Everbold. I am Steve, a.k.a. Kilowaki, with yep. me in studio for the first time in forever and probably giving me COVID as we speak, Scott Prime. Howdy, Steve. How's it going? It is going wonderful. This is what, maybe our second episode in studio this year? <laughs> we haven't had many. And I'm still not digging it, but whatever. Scott wanted to do it, and I'm like, okay, fine. I've lived long enough. Well, Steve, I've lived a good life. Steve has to do it because he knows it's that time of year where Santa Scott fills his <laughs> stocking full of goodies and toys. Did you ever find my stocking? I did find your stocking. Okay, good, because I couldn't find it. I found it by accident. I must have not put it up with the Christmas stuff, and I stuffed it into this like cabinet, and I was digging out like a new trash bag you know, for okay. the kitchen, and I found your stocking. Well, good. So, hello, everybody. Yeah. Have we done anything Blood Bowl related the last since the last episode? Uh, like playing Blood Bowl? Yeah, like any, anything. Yes, I've actually... Um, oh, Fumble. Oh. I played some Fumble. Yeah. Um, do you want to hear about those wonderful exploits of Fumble? <laughs> no. I'm playing in the Iowa League that they're oh, doing. Okay. Yeah. Um, and... Um, playing some corn because my three choices this season was corn goblins or underworld and i played underworld several times on fumble so i wanted to play something different and i didn't want to deal with nine games of um, goblins so i chose corn which was a big mistake <laughs> not doing well um i am three wins i think one or two ties and four losses that's not horrible um so I'm not doing horrible, but at the same time, corn is like really, really, really rough. Yeah. Like I wish they would go away. And I if, know, you might have your wish. <laughs> I, I want them to go away forever. They're just, they're just tough because if you can't get any skills, you just got all these guys with frenzy. They're just going to eat your rerolls yeah. all the freaking time. Um, it's a weird thing. If I get inducements, I usually have a chance. And if I don't get inducements, I'm dead. Because in our league, I've had to start this team over uh, several times because yeah. I played Tim Lyons' snotling team that killed two of my players right off the bat. Jeez. And once you have injuries and you have to have a bunch of journeymen, which makes it even worse, it's really tough. Yeah. Anyways, I'm not a big corn fan. Now, I will say when I played them in tournaments, I I didn't hate them because I got to choose some skills. And, and it was only three or four games at most. Right. Mm-hmm. It is uh, pretty rough, um, but it is what it is. Thank God I only have one more game, and if I make the playoffs, which, man, the competitive in me doesn't want to lose my game, <laughs> um, but if I lose, most likely I'm out of the playoffs. So that there's a silver lining either way. If I win, I'm probably going to have to play another game, which is going to be awful. <laughs> to so be, sad. To, to be quite frank, I'm... I am really, really, really tired of playing Blood Bowl 2016. I'm ready to play some Blood Bowl 2020 or the, what, second season edition of Blood Bowl. Yeah. But I don't know when that's going to happen in, like, a video game format or even tabletop just because of all the, uh, you know, the COVID stuff. Yeah. I mean, we've talked now for a while about like, well, we could try to get a league. And then we ask around and people are like, well, my wife's not going to let me come to the store and play. I don't feel safe doing this right now. Maybe, you know, mid 2021. So that's kind of where we're at in all this. Yeah, we can hope. Um, at least the vaccines are out there. So it should be good. Yeah, I'll we, happily I, get mine whenever I can. I hope it all goes well. Uh, I hope people don't mutate into a bunch of army of hulks. Nah. You don't think so? Nah. Wouldn't that be cool? Oh, I'm not saying it wouldn't be cool. I just don't see it happening. Oh, okay. Well, that's how it happens in comics. So that's pretty much um. how I base my reality is like <laughs> comic books. Okay. Well, then we're probably... That's why I just painted on this blue costume, Steve, and that's why you can see all my muscles. I wasn't going to ask. I thought it was odd. <laughs> the the bright neon cod piece. I don't didn't. I don't. It's a bold that, that's choice. That's to distract you, so I can punch yeah, it's, you. It's distracting. It's like 
goes I, into... I still haven't ma- mastered how to fly yet. It's like, I don't know how it goes inside. It's weird. So today, as we record, is the release of the new Skaven dice and the new Dwarf dice, and along with their card sets. Yeah. Are you excited and, about those at all? And the new uh, pitch, which is the old oh. pitch, but with new dugouts. Is that what it is, the difference? Mm-hmm. It's okay. got the tiny dugouts. Probably packaged in the new stuff. Yeah. I'm glad they're kind of... You I know, got th- I'm getting the dice. I'm getting the dice, too. I got one card pack just out of curiosity, and I know I might regret it <laughs> I later. I can't do it anymore. I just... I'm not going to blow 50 bucks on two card packs that I'm never going to use because half of them are full of blank cards that are worthless. I'm really curious to see if the dwarf card pack has star players that weren't in the book. No. No. Okay. Thanks for ruining my day. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> I don't believe so anyways. Well, that's okay. I mean, I knew what I was getting into. I thought, you know, I keep hearing that the I did not get the necro one. Yeah. And I heard that it has like a deck tailored to like necro inducements and stuff like mm-hmm. that. There's part of me that really wants to like there's times I fantasize like we can we can do an actual 16 you know, like uh, game season and really see how things play out long term. And we can use all the cards and it'll be really fun. And it's just not real feasible right now with everything, yeah. you know, in the world and time wise for people. And I know we're harping on this again, but Oklahoma is just so bad right now. You put our, our education system has failed us. So um, we're. I think we're the worst in the nation right now, so yeah, yes, for population density. For COVID stuff? Mm-hmm. Uh, that might be. I, so, yeah. I'll be honest, I try not to watch the news too often. I don't either. I just see um, posts and stuff. I try to uh, immerse myself into things like, you know, Blood Bowl, mm-hmm. uh, comic books. Um, been so, dabbling into some D&D, because I'm going to start running that for my children. Cool. Um, and I miss board games with my friends, desperately. Yeah. Um. Real quick, I did get to play. This is not Blood Bowl related, That's but fine. I got to play uh, Ether Fields, the yeah. Kickstarter game that came out by the same people I think who make. Oh, that's probably wrong. I want to say it's the same people that make Nemesis, but I could be wrong on that. I don't know. I, I don't My remember. My brother has it. He they really like it. Your brother, yeah. I've seen your post that your brother, lo- you know, really enjoys it and stuff. Um, the rule book. Once we figured out a couple of things. Um, I thought it played well. It was very interesting. Mm. I would play it again. I would not go out and buy it only because like I'd probably only play it with the same people. Yeah. And if Gary already owns it, there's no reason for me to own it. But it has a really neat like card mechanic where you lay tiles on top of tiles and it just kind of blends together to like huh. form a map. It was uh, kind of like a co-op choose your own adventure thing and it was it was a good little time, so I look forward so to playing it again. Co op choose your own adventure, so it's Dungeons and Dragons with more cost. Um, in some ways, yeah. I mean, like that's isn't that kind of a lot of board games yeah. now? I mean, Gloomhaven really is Dungeons and Dragons with a mm-hmm. um, you don't have a game master, and it kind of like focus you focuses you on where you're going to go. And I I may have come up with this term, I may have heard it somewhere, but like directed RPG is basically what I see most of these games as. And it just bothers me because I'd rather just play Dungeons and Dragons because I can just pick and choose my own stuff. I got you. But yeah, they're fun. I uh, have not played anything. I've not done anything. All right. Well, that's cuz we've you're... been playing Rocket League a lot. <laughs> we have been playing Rocket League. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, we are the um, we're like really good low level players. <laughs> yeah. the best of the worst. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, what are we going to talk about today, Steve? Because this is like just days before Christmas. Yeah, it's a week um, to go. Do you like Christmas? Uh, yeah, Honestly, I'm human. Yeah, of course. Okay. Well, I don't know. Yeah, you know, like I always felt like I forced it on you when we were roommates. Well, no, I just I enjoy it. Yeah. I think I like the build up to Christmas more than Christmas Day. Because, man, once it's over, it's like, wow, that's it? If Christmas is different than it used to be, because obviously my mom's not with us anymore, and she was the heart of Christmas. Mm-hmm. And then after that, it kind of just teetered off. We were all adults, so it's not like my parents are buying me anything. So it, it it's how you look at Christmas. I'm not getting anything, so there's not much excitement there. Also, I haven't usually had the money to buy stuff for people, so there's not much excitement there. I got you. So, 
Yeah, I'm really bad about like, oh, it's Christmas time. I can justify wasting mm-hmm. money on people I know. I get it, yeah. And every year I say I'm not going to spend as much. And I <laughs> usually just spend the same amount. If I didn't spend as much on somebody, I usually like filter it to somebody yeah. else. <laughs> um, anyways, as for the episode, this is the last one for the year, barring any weirdness. I don't know why we'd come back. But we're going to reintroduce ourselves for anyone new to the game. And then we're going to take a look back at 2020 for what it was and look ahead to 2021. I guarantee you we will get back on track. It's just been obviously a little rough with everything going on and not being playing real games in real life. I think this is a good time to do a reintro because there's a lot of a lot of new players. Yeah. Like if you're a part of the any of the Blood Bowl uh, community pages like on Facebook or something every day. And it's to me, it's really fun to watch people yeah. go i just bought this set this set and i'm gonna i bought halflings like tell me did i make a good choice and you're like uh <laughs> or i haven't played the game since 1990 and i'm getting back in because yeah. it was so cheap i'm like great come yeah. on i have seen a few people i guess knee jerk buy it buy a couple of teams and then realize like oh i don't this is not for me because <laughs> it's like um only been open, never been played. Mm-hmm. I'm getting out, and it's like that's all new stuff, bro. <laughs> yeah, it happens, but yeah, I mean, I did the same thing. I got that Necromunda set, and I realized like, eh, I don't, I'm not gonna love this as much as I want to love this, or have people that will play with me. So I got, yeah. I sold mine too. So. As everyone knows, Blood Bowl is only as much fun as you put into it, and if it's just you and one other person, it can be kind of old. Sure, like Scott and I, we love each other, we're close to each other. We both know how to play the game. We have all the stuff. Are we going to sit around and play each other 43 times in a row? No. We would kill each other. Steve doesn't want to lose that much to me. Uh, He doesn't want to hear me (laughs) whine the whole time. (laughs) Uh, There's that, yeah. All right, so let's take a break. We'll come back with a re-intro, a re-origin? Be like a re origin? That's not a thing. Is that not a word? Okay. (laughs) So if you've listened before, this might be different. It might be similar. It should be similar, but hey, we don't we don't we're older now, so so who knows? (laughs) We don't. So this could be really fun for somebody like (laughs) Phil, (laughs) who's gonna maybe heard this for like two other times, and he's gonna go, "That's not what you said before." Sean, Australia taking notes. (laughs) Nope, liar, liar. liar. Somewhere you guys were lying. (laughs) Anyways, this is a Superboy punch in the wall for a new continuity of both down. We'll be back. Both down is brought to you by Wizards Asylum, Norman, Oklahoma. You can find them online at wizardsnorman.com or on Facebook at Wizards Norman. So contact them, get something sent, and support both down. Okay, we are back, and as we said, it's time to reintroduce ourselves. So what's your name, Steve? It is Steve. Oh. Also known as Steve Campbell, which is the full name, and then Kilowoggy, because my username for the longest time is Kilowog1 or Kilowog2814, and now it's just been Kilowoggy. I think we can blame Johnny Paletis on that, right? I think Didn't he start calling you yeah. Kilowoggy? Or... And they started doing add a Kilowoggy to all the pictures and stuff? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's where Kilowoggy ended up happening. Uh, I am Scott Prime, otherwise known as Scott Delcine in real life. Ooh, he that's... gave away the last name. I've Yeah, I've never probably said that officially. Probably have. Probably, but, but I don't know if in my origin story. Anyways, um, uh, Scott Prime comes from an old podcast I did that's I don't even think out there in any form whatsoever. Um, back on the Couch Pirate days, and it was really started because it was like I just kind of wanted a gimmick, and I was having a birthday, and it was a prime number, and I said you can just call me <laughs> Scott Prime because we all went by like you know Couch Pirate Kevin. So does that mean you started when you were thirty one? <laughs> no, I think it was thirty seven, maybe thirty seven's prime number. Yeah, but. How old are you now? I'm 46. Right, so... I don't know. Maybe maybe it was. Because Couch Pirates was going on for longer 
like years before we maybe started. Maybe the year itself was a prime number. I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't um, know. It doesn't really matter. That's how that little kind of gimmick started because I got tired of us all calling each other like, it's Couch Pirate Scott and mm-hmm. Couch Pirate Brian and yeah. Couch Pirate Jake. And so I was just like, <sighs> he called me Scott Prime and it kind of just stuck. Yeah. And then I'm not obsessed with prime numbers and stuff, but like... <laughs> <laughs> throughout the years it's like okay fine i'll play it feels like i kind of gave myself an accidental uh wrestling gimmick mm-hmm. and so i've just kind of stuck with it yeah. so uh i prefer everybody just call me scott prime and that's how you can find me on facebook and twitter and stuff like that the real scott prime right real scott prime at twitter or yeah at twitter or whatever. whatever yeah yeah um World. the origin story of me is like i played blood bowl way back when um, second edition, I know that the star player book came out a couple of months after we started playing blood bowl. And I want to say that was like 87, 88, 88 to the second edition came out. Okay. So, so it must be around there. So it must've been around 1988. Do you know when the star player book came out? The old um, yellow cover? 89, 89. Yeah. So somewhere in there. And then the companion was 90. Okay. Yeah. So. We probably got Blood Bowl in 1989, to be honest with you. Um, and you picked it up from the Hobby Shop at Crossroads Mall in Oklahoma City. I did. What? You have weird notes over there or something? No. You just remember this? I loved the Hobby <laughs> Shop when I was growing up. We are in Oklahoma, if you don't know. More Oklahoma, to be precise, the land of tornadoes. <laughs> yes, golly. The land of tornadoes. Knock on wood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We even have an episode all about it. Hey, um, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, so my friend Gary had some birthday money, and I think we paid fifty dollars for Blood Bowl when it came out way back when. I remember his mother was not too pleased that he was going to waste all his money on a board game at yeah. the time, um, and it was magical for us because we all we role played. We played a lot of like um, Marvel superheroes. I mean, like we got to the point where if like we didn't even have like a story or somebody wanted to be the game master, we would say, "Well, you know, in, in the X Men fight in the in the Danger Room, they p- fight Sentinels all the time. So let's just pick three heroes each, and we'll face twenty five Sentinels." <laughs> and we did stuff like that, just uh, play games. My um, my friend group, I wanted to play role playing games since I was a kid. I always loved them, <clears throat> and I tried playing with my older brother. He's four years older than me. I was probably. I don't know, he was in high school, so let's say I was 11, he was 15, mm-hmm. and he was forced to play role-playing with Dungeons & Dragons with me, and he ended up just killing me real fast. <laughs> well, that's and what a good brother would do. I whined to mom, and she said, Greg, stop killing your brother, so I thought that was funny. But then I got the DC, I was a big DC Comics fan, still am, so I got the DC Heroes role-playing game, and I presented it to my friends, they're like, cool, let's try and I got about three minutes into it because I was trying to do voices and stuff to make you know real role playing, uh-huh. and uh, yeah, that didn't that didn't work. <laughs> so it, it's difficult. I mean, <sighs> I know me, Robert, and Gary. We did Marvel superheroes, and then I found the DC role playing game, mm-hmm. and then I bought that. That was kind of my big kind of jump into role playing game, like running something. And I remember at the time, I you know I pretty much had one friend you know that was close and so robert played the flash and i played i was the game master or whatever and like he was in charge of this team of heroes called the city it was very simple like it, it, we were in a city we didn't even say what city it was at the time the and, city of and we city. protected it and his team name was called the city protectors just very simple <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it worked for us and like he had all these other heroes a part of the team and he was the leader and it was it felt like our own magical world you yeah. know and it was great and then when blood bowl came around it was even better because we were into sports you know we all played sports at the time we all had <laughs> as silly as it sounds gary had uh like a f- made-up football league And he had this little game where you could lay like almost like clear acetate little charts on top Mm -hmm. of charts and then you'd roll dice and it would say like, oh, this run play, oh, and this defense, if you rolled this, you got plus two yards or minus three yards or whatever. I think I played that. It was a very cool simulator at the time. And he made up all sorts of teams and then he even made up like the running back's name. Um, He used a lot of characters that were out of like 
comic book writers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Cause I remember laughing like, Oh, Frank Miller's the running back for this team. <laughs> and I love that idea, but I didn't have that game. Um, so I remember making up my own football league and I made up a, like it was like the Oklahoma city. I think they were called the comets, maybe something like that. That's where the New York, I, I love the team name rampage. It was a team called the New York rampage. Um, I made up all these teams in a 16 game schedule, just like the NFL. And I would just randomly go around and like open up a page of a book and, you know, drop my finger somewhere. And if it, it was a six letter word, I would round it up to seven and say, well, the New York rampage scored seven points in this quarter and <laughs> stuff. Or I asked my dad, dad, give me a number, like a football number, mm -hmm. uh, 10. Okay. And I'd write it down and I played up this whole league all season 16 games plus playoffs and the New York Rampage ended up winning the Super Bowl in my league and so interesting um I didn't have anything like that but I do remember when I was a kid you know playing the electronic football uh -huh. and kind of taking notes with the because I didn't have it but a friend down the street did right so we'd play and we'd like write out the team names and then like when I watched baseball because I've been a Cubs fan since 82 83 so probably 83 I remember I used to when I watched them I would have a notebook that I would keep names and stats and all this. So, interestingly, if we start looking at it, we both come from a background of loving sports, loving role-playing games, and trying to put our own f twist on stuff. Oh, for sure. And that leads perfectly into Blood Bowl. Exactly. And that's <laughs> what, when Blood Bowl came around, you know, we opened the box, you had all these miniatures, and... <laughs> The it miniatures at the time were great. I know they were like all the same pose, plastic humans and plastic mm -hmm. orcs all in one pose. That didn't matter to us because we came from a background where we used a little, you know, paper chit to represent like, oh, this is Wolverine. Yeah. See this little cardboard piece and where the arrow's pointing is actually where he's standing. You know, yeah. So we, we used our imagination and I know this sounds like old men, but you know, we didn't have the internet and stuff and video games were really hard and the graphics weren't that good. Mm -hmm. Um, so using your imagination was very much needed back then. And it didn't seem like a problem, you know, at all. And, um, so when we sell this blood bowl thing and then they talked about all the teams and then all this, what we call now is fluff, you know, all the, all the background, like, Oh, this team has a history and they made it up and they have all these, did you know, things with little stats and stuff. We played right into that. Yeah. I mean, like, we played right into it. Before we got the Star Players book or had anything else, we took everything out of the box. We played, like, two games of, like, this is how you play the game. And then immediately we were like, all right, well, we need to start a league. <laughs> well, there was me, Robert, and Gary. There was three of us and our friend Sean. Um, Sean Wilson, different Sean Wilson than who I'm uh, – pod you know do the test for geek thing with you know two sean Wilson's. i knew two, two, this is the sean wilson i knew growing up oh, okay um his parents were split so he he went to school with us up to sixth grade and then he yeah. went to live with dad in ardmore so he'd come up and visit and he would have some teams um <laughs> and so he play some blood bowl with us but um that summer we made up all 16 game schedule for all 40 teams that are in the book. And if you look in the new Blood Bowl 2020 um, rule book on the hardback, if you go to page 14, you're going to see all these teams listed. Um, I believe in the article, it talks about the uh, NAF or NFC conference and the AFC conference. And it has like the AFC Central, the Northern Division. All these teams listed is pretty much verbatim what was in the second edition rules. Right. I mean, there's slight changes here. Uh, we don't have to go into that. But for the and, most part, these were the teams we played. So, And just so people know, in the future, we will probably be referencing the second edition a lot when it comes to the new rules. Because there's a lot of throwback. Like if you look at the new pitch that came out, or that's in the box set, excuse me. Oh, that's the it. other pitch came out. Um, but the pitch that's in the box set, the one side is basically the Astro Granite one that you would have got in the second edition box. Right. So we'll, as we go along, if you're ever curious, if you want to go look at the second edition, we'll probably be referencing that a lot in months coming. Yeah, if you're new to this podcast, this is the first time you're listening to it, you're going to hear me really reminisce a lot about those rules. Mm-hmm. 
they weren't better. <laughs> it's just that's where a lot of my childhood memories are locked into. Right. Um, but there was no block dice for anyone curious. This right. was before block dice came There was around. charts and all this stuff. So immediately we started this. We divided up the teams. So again, this is a 16-game division. No, it's or 40 season. teams. For 40 teams. 40 teams, 16 games. That's 640 <laughs> games. This is a lot of games, and three little boys <laughs> played each other over and over and over again. Eventually, we divided up the teams. Everybody got 13 teams. Mm -hmm. You had two main teams, so we made sure the schedule never faced off. Like My two main teams were the Dwarf Giants and the Old Heim Ogres, yeah. and we made sure they never faced each other, so there was no conflict. Um, and then the other teams, like if I had... Orkland Raiders, which I did, if they were playing the Dwarf Giants, I would play the Dwarf Giants, and Gary or Robert would sub in and be the coach for the Orkland Raiders. Mm -hmm. That's how we handled stuff. Um, we kept stats, so every time a character moved one square, we'd say, that's four yards. God. He made four yards. Oh, he moved three. That's 12 yards. And we'd keep stats for these little things. Oh, he threw this many yards. It was crazy. And we had notebook paper that we wrote down, you know, like, all the, the players and stuff. Mm -hmm. Then we got the second edition. Or I'm not the second edition. The Star Player book. That came out about three or four weeks into our season. Okay. Okay. So we were playing by the very basic generic rules for the longest time. And then when we got that Star Player book, Steve, we thought, oh, we didn't read enough of it. We just went, oh, everybody has star. They have so, skills. And for people unfamiliar with it, the Star Player book essentially was the first time that they put into the rules that there were these star players out there that you could have on your team. Right. And they were very <clears throat> unique. They had each one had their own drawing. They had their own stats, their own background, all of that. And we thought just by glancing over and halfway reading the rules as probably 13 year old boys at the time, um, like, Oh, well this makes sense. You know, like this rookie guy, he's, he gets some skills. So you'd roll on the random chart and go, Oh, 66. He gets seven skills. Jeez. <clears throat> and so for the next like three or four weeks in the season, every team had players with one to seven skills. Cause we yeah. just rolled up skills for everybody. Not thinking about like, you need to earn skill points and this and that. So it was a very fun, weird season where the rules changed constantly because, like, a white dwarf would come out and we go, "Did you know there's chainsaws? What? Yeah. And back then, um, a lot of times, white dwarfs would come out and they would just throw in extra rules. Right. Typically, they were said that they were optional, but, of course, you guys would just... Oh, gosh. We were like, oh, well, I'm doing it because it says so here. Mm -hmm. Like, typical people, you know, like, back then, you can have chainsaw guys. They could... I think you could have two of them, I think. Sounds right. Um, they had to be the lineman positionals, and they used the same kind of blocking chart, but with the agility score. So I'm telling you guys, back in the day, halfling linemen were amazing <laughs> with the chainsaw because back then they had four agility, and the average was three. But you would have those guys, you know, take a chainsaw to a tree man, and they'd get like... I think it was like plus three or something like that on the chart to hurt them. So anyways, it was different set of rules, but the nobody liked the chainsaw loonies of halflings at right. all. So um, anyways, we played a whole season of this. I remember I had two of my teams out of the 13 make it to the finals. It was the old time ogres versus the Orkland Raiders. And my two buddies at that point refused to play me because they were mad that both my teams were in the finals. So did you play out? All 640 games? Yes. Between the three of you? Yes. That's insane. We played... And back then, it, you played until one person got to three points, right? First one to three. Because okay. that's... From everything we saw, that's how it was. And typically, how long did those games last? Uh, sometimes they were really quick. You could tell when somebody just didn't care about one of their teams. Like, oh, I'm playing with the Lowdown Rats, and yeah. I don't give a crap. I'll let you score. And then other times you could see somebody like, oh, I'm going to try to kill your catcher because we just rolled up a bunch of good skills okay. for him and he's impossible to tackle. So it wasn't like three hours each time. No, 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 no. Sometimes you could play a game. I mean, golly, you'd think that it probably had to be at least an hour, though, you know. Yeah, but it, if you're kids with nothing better to do, you can get eight or ten. I mean, we, we would play quite a few games. Um, to be honest, I don't know how close 
to. I mean, oh, I sure, think yeah, we yeah. were playing right, but you know, I don't know how close we were really playing. Of you know, course. correct, correct. And back then, it wasn't like a turnover happened. Everybody got to move mm-hmm. um, and do a block action and fall down or whatever. It's a totally different game. It's a much better game now. You're playing a much better game than oh, for sure. back in second edition. Um, we played all that out. We get, I get both teams to the finals, and my friends don't want to play me. They're mad. So. They start working on the draft because, of course, like NFL has a draft. We're going to make a draft. So mm-hmm. we, we were just constantly rolling up star players to make a draft. <laughs> and I would name the players kind of goofy names like, you know, Birdsong Birdseed, even though he was a great elf thrower. And other people wouldn't draft him because they didn't <laughs> like his name. Uh, we named all our characters, too. So this whole role-playing aspect has been done for a long time. We finished the league. The old high ogres did not win. Unfortunately, the Oakland Raiders of all teams <laughs> um, won our blood bowl that first season. I mean, like I couldn't even cheat myself because I played out that game by myself. I threw right. the block dice and everything else. To no, be fair, no block dice. <clears throat> I'm not the block dice, but rolled out the blocks and all that mm-hmm. stuff. So I like injured some of my own players. To be fair, the old old time ogres. Before we divided all the teams equally into 13, Robert and Gary decided somewhere based off like some names that they could have been goblins. They could have been Skaven. So they went with Skaven, I think, with a <laughs> with a nod to Sean Wilson at the time saying, like, let's make them Skaven or something. So it was the one year that you had Ogres and Skaven together. I would I would kill for that roster now. <laughs> <laughs> it's really ridiculous, man. Um, but I use a lot of the, you know, that time was interesting because I still use a lot of those names that I made back yeah, up in junior high. Um, you know, we didn't, we didn't discover, we knew of girls, but I guess we were more worried about Griff and the boys because we played a lot, <laughs> a lot of Blood Bowl. And then after that edition of Blood Bowl, we tried to make a smaller league. We actually tried to start a Dungeon Bowl which didn't last but a few weeks of the season. Um, Just not as much interest there. Yeah. And then we tried to do a smaller league several different times with some adding some different friends here or there where we'd only take over two teams. And uh, no other season got ever completed besides that that big one. Now, by our standards now as adults, you know, we could have played 10 seasons, you know, in that many of games. So... That is kind of my Blood Bowl origin, and that's why I always say that Blood Bowl is a sports role-playing game. These are the reasons why I love Blood Bowl, and I also sometimes hate it because people will struggle with team names, and they go straight for the pun names, which... Really? It's your game. Do what you want. Yeah, we're not trying to be gatekeepers. Like, you can't do that, or it's stupid if you do. Right. It's just not the way that we do it. And we think it's just more fun if you make it more realistic. I feel like Blood Bowl is in a world um, kind of like what Pete Nifton says. It's kind of like a Looney Tunes w- version of like the Warhammer universe, mm-hmm. where silly things happen. Um, and yet, kind of everybody sits in the stands and gets to get gets along but when they get out on the pitch they want to all fight each other they don't get along in the stands there are fights well you go you know i'm saying i'm just saying like you have goblins sitting next to humans and everything else Uh, absolutely um i prefer people really look at this through it can be comedic i get that but if you are a sports fan and you play Blood Bowl, I do not know how you come up with so many pun names simply because, or like these names that are like, we're the green guys. It's yeah. like you would not go to your local sports team. For example, if you live in America, if the Baltimore Ravens change their name to like, we love birds, mm-hmm. there's no way you would support that team. No. And that's that's my perspective. Now that's coming from a guy who sees the deep role-playing aspect in this thing. You know what I mean? I mean, you don't want to go see, you know, United McKnighty, United face or whatever. (laughs) Right. And so if you listen to old podcasts of both down or future ones, you're going to hear me at times gripe about names because I don't like losing in Blood Bowl. And yet if I do lose, I hate saying like, you know, I played the We Are Green team. Yeah. 
because it's just not fun. Or no. somebody who makes up um, Undead Team One because they're just too mm-hmm. lazy to make a team name. Yeah. Or, so or many... like their ghoul, you know, like, well, at least the ghoul who scored a crazy touchdown on me had a really cool name. Yeah. Or it's Ghoul's Gone Wild. <laughs> and, you, you know, you just got scored on by Cindy Lopper. Yeah. It's like, I mean, it's fine if it's like spelled different, but if it's just. That, that's not the type of Blood Bowl I like. And that's why when I was a league commissioner, we can go into that. I'm going to let you tell that kind of story. Uh, when I was the league commissioner for the league that we had at, for mm-hmm. as adults for 10 seasons, if people's team name I did not like, or at least didn't like kind of work, <laughs> I would disapprove them. And yeah. I was really kind of militantly mean on that just because like, it's not hard to pick out a map. No of the old world and go like, where's some human settlements? Oh, there's a city called Nuln and they're known for like their gunpowders and stuff. Maybe I'll do the Nuln bombers or the, you know, whatever it is. Oklahoma, you know, new patriarchs, whatever. It doesn't matter. I mean, there's change up real world stuff anyways, but I've also been a guy when we role played, you know, like I had friends who like, in like a Star Wars game, a role playing game that I was playing with, you know, like they had aliases. Mm-hmm. Well, they made up their aliases as like modern day stuff. Like, oh, I, my alias is Mickey Mouse. Yeah, Donald Duck, and I I hated that because it didn't it did not fit. It didn't feel Star Wars. You right. get what I'm saying? Like Star Wars didn't have names like that. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of until the prequels. Well, <laughs> sort of. I. And I griped at my friends for that. It's like you're taking me out of the immersion here, mm-hmm. you know, like that I want to feel like. I want to belong and to this universe. Then you would go play role playing with Mr. Buckles. Well, Mr. Buckles as a goat name works. I'm not going to disagree. Yeah. That's a great name. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that's. I forgot what my actually. My little gnome's name was who had the pet goat, <laughs> Mr. Buckles. <laughs> Anyways. So, second edition. You playing, you get around, and then basically third edition comes out in around 94, and that's about when you stopped playing, right? We bought that. <laughs> Let me tell you something. We were shocked and appalled and angry that the dice changed, like mm-hmm. the game changed. We had block dice now. Why do we need these stupid dice? So were you charts? out of the game and then we're getting back into it, or were we you were still st- going strong? Because that's like five years. We were still playing... We had leagues, like I said, we, we rebooted like a league three or four times with okay. the Dungeon Bowl thing, mm-hmm. with, you know, let's start over again. Oh, that didn't work. Or it worked after like, I remember we bought 94 edition or whatever. Right when it came out, we started a league with some guys um, that Robert worked with over at the movie theater, I believe. I think Hooper played with us just very little. And I mean, we got maybe three weeks into the season. Do you remember the comic shop, The Other Side, that was in Midwest City? Owned by a guy named Jim. It was over there by Heritage Park Mall 5 um, Theater. You might not, because I'm a little bit older than you. No. I, it was a, there was a comic shop. It show. sounds familiar, but I we decided we get to, out there too to actually play our games yeah. there. That was my first time playing games at like a comic shop. Oh, that's cool. So we decided to play our games there as much as we could to try to get interest in Blood Bowl. Um, it only lasted three or four like season weeks Mm -hmm. everybody took two teams again type deal so we could have more teams and uh it just didn't last too long um we didn't like the new rules i mean we just it was just too different you know we we were so in love with like second edition that this thing of like man you could fall over and your turn's over yeah man you mean if i pick up the ball right at the bat and i drop it my turn's over man that's brutal that's stupid why would anybody want to do this i think i maybe enjoyed it the most but I was still very hesitant of like, sure, I can't get my friends into this because now they got to learn new stuff. Um, so we kind of fell out of it. And then I remember somewhere along the way, I don't, to be honest, I don't think I personally bought the third edition. I think Robert bought that. I think based on what you've said before, I believe so. Uh, I had Dungeon Bowl for sure. Um, then they had this time period where, Everything kind of disappeared for Blood Bowl, and then Crunch came out. No, Crunch was 91. Was it? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we didn't get Crunch. Nobody wants Crunch. Um, It may not have come out to the U.S. or something, but no. No, you're probably right. I'm probably just remembering things weird. I remember just seeing the box set. Maybe I saw a box set years later, because I remember being tempted. Um, (laughs) 
I think, think it was didn't. around, I want to say 2003 or so, I saw a copy at um, a, a shop called The Game that was in Heritage Park Mall. And I was with my mom for my birthday, and I had some birthday money. And I remember picking up, it was basically third edition all over again. Yeah. And inside, on the cover or something, it's, it came with like a yearbook or something of 2003. Does that sound about right? Almanac? Uh, I think so, something like that. Something yeah. like that that had some extra like experimental rules in it. And that's when I rebought, kind of got into Blood Bowl again. I painted some miniatures up for the first time. And, and that's when they were putting time. out the, the magazine too, wasn't it? They were putting out the magazine. I did not buy any right. of those live at the time. Because um, that was like, had to be like 2002, because that was when the fourth edition came out. And 2001. This was probably I about 2004 the, then. Okay. Because I had something in there that was like 2003 or something like that. Anyways, I bought it for myself. I painted the orc team. Uh, I did the thing where you just paint them like a. Spray paint them black for your primer and add some red and green done, mm -hmm. you know, and I was really proud of myself and I got Gary to start playing with me again. And we played just some one-off matches, which is terrible. I mean, cause if you're a guy who loves role-playing games, you just don't want to play the same one character brand new all the time because yeah. you want some growth. Um, and then this is about the time we were playing hero clicks and, yeah, you were running hero clicks everywhere. For that, um, I guess I'll just tell my story. You know, I got into a game called Hero Clicks, and a buddy of mine bought some, and then I ended up buying some, and I bought some more, and I bought some more. And I kind of have an addictive personality when I get into something, so I had a whole crap really. Ton. I know, huh. as we sit surrounded by Blood Bowl stuff. Um, and I started seeing that Hero Clicks. If you don't know, it's like a miniatures game with DC heroes and Marvel heroes playing on a map, and you try to win. But it had tournaments. So I'm like, that sounds cool. And I think I tried to go to one around here in you know Oklahoma City, but couldn't find one. So I just started running them at the comic book shop I used to always go to. And that turned into me running them every weekend for like five years. Mm -hmm. And I would, you know, I loved coming up with different scenarios, different ideas. But I was also very much a stickler for I had to know the right rules so that when people came in, everyone was on equal footing. So Scott comes in with his, what was it Gary with you at that time? Um, probably. I think it was you and Gary that came. And you started playing some and we got to know each other and... Oh. Started becoming friends, and then you started running events, and we were hardcore into Blood Bowl for a while. You mean Hero Clicks? Yeah, Hero Clicks. <laughs> duh. Yeah, um, for like you said, for a good four or five years. Yeah, I was trying to think of how long, and I can't remember. There was every weekend there was at least three to five venues God. that were running events, and then we had a lot of people. You know. People weren't having kids. They might have been yeah. married, but they weren't having kids. We had a lot of people that would hit every venue. You know, like legit. Friday night, Wizards. Saturday morning, Speeding Bullet. Saturday. Afternoon, Dragon afternoon, Fire. Afternoon, Dragon Fire. Sometimes dra Saturday evenings, Dragon Fire. Sometimes, yeah. We start running two So we events. do two events. And then Borders and then on Sunday nights. Do World on Sunday Day, afternoon. And then Borders. And Sunday then Borders night. at Sunday night. So at max was six games a weekend and typically we all went to them it was kind of like our bar traveling bar yeah. because we had about anywhere from and these weren't like four people following around this was anywhere from 14 to 24 people showing up a lot of times it, yeah um, and we'd go to lunch we'd have dinner you know you and i before we were really close friends we went down to wizard's world dallas yeah we to did go play hero, hero clicks, clicks there so, and like you said, though, we just didn't do like bring 300 points and we'll have a yeah. battle. We'd always have scenarios. Mm -hmm. So we kind of turned this superhero game kind of into a, a mini role-playing role game in some ways. Also, we traveled to a lot of events. You know, we went to pre-releases in Tulsa, went to a pre-release in Arkansas. Yep. So this started, you know, we went to the Comic-Con in Dallas. So 
this is a game that we played with role playing elements that we traveled with. Right. And then won't get into it, but I got a sour taste in my mouth from the game. Well, the game designers also changed. You got to remember yeah. that. And all of us were starting to get a sour taste of Hero. I Clint. got screwed on something. And then, yeah, they changed the game. And I was basically like, I'm out. Got rid of everything. And that's when I used this time to go, would you like to play some Blood Bowl? <laughs> and I think I was, there might have been a couple of other people that took you up on the offer. Uh-huh. But it was mainly me. And then. It was you, Sarge, and we got Alan. But I was yeah. you. you I was thinking like at the beginning, it was like me, Gary, and. Oh, it was probably just us just to play some one-off games. And then we had to convince the other guys like Alan and Brian and all to get into it. Yes, we got, and we had a bunch Sorry. of just, I call it a home league. You're going to hear me say that and Steve's going to laugh and say, <sighs> it's just a league you play at home, you moron. Anyways, I can't get well, that. No, that's, oh man. So this is a running joke on this podcast for many reasons. A, I don't make fun of you for that. I make fun of you because you, every time you say it, you say, it's a home league, which is a league we play at home. You don't need to say both. You can just say one or the other. I think I'm very justified in explaining <laughs> it to somebody who maybe is listening to the very first time that a home league is some not a store league. And it's a league you play at home. <laughs> it's a league as you it would imply home. by the name home league. Yes. <laughs> That's the joke. We Anyways. also played this home league with a lot of our friends. So, yeah. like, it didn't matter if somebody was at my house at 9 o'clock. You know, I'm putting my kids to bed or something because we all trusted each other. Yeah. Uh, we didn't let, like, complete strangers in. Like, no. it, it was a – if we asked you to play in the home league, it was a big deal to us because that means, like, we cared enough about you and liked you enough that we accepted you to come over to and be a part of our families. So who was in that first league? First league was Hooper me, was there, you right? – James, yeah, um, I believe Hooper. He was he was the Tabasco Hellcats. Um, and then Brian took them over when he came in. And um, Gary was in the first one. And Alan, I, Sarge, I, Sarge, Sarge I think for sure. There was six of us at the beginning. We all took two teams each. That way, we could have uh, two different divisions that mm-hmm. played amongst each other. Um, we did the top two teams made from each division made the playoffs. And uh, that worked for a while. Uh, we had, like, Gary left the league at one point. Uh, we had a guy named Spence play with us. Mm-hmm. We had a guy named Leland play a few seasons with us. Scott Hess played with us for a few seasons. John Breeze, et cetera. John Breeze. We had Robert a lot of people start season. coming into mm-hmm. it at we, the end. We tried to always, I think at one point, we might have had 14 teams. Maybe. Yeah. I think we always had at least 12. Yeah. Um, but some people were like, my schedule's not enough. I just need, I, I can only play one team this league. Mm-hmm. And so then we try to recruit somebody else to, to balance out the league and divisions and stuff. So <laughs> we kept stats like for like star player points and all that stuff. Uh, we made sure people had names that were approved by me, or mm-hmm. as I say, both down approved. We really asked people to name their teams. Our buddy Sarge wrote up a thing. Yeah. The uh, Dragonfire Weekly. I'll let you- which? I'll let you explain kind of that, which oh. actually really like added flair to the league. And that I know other leagues dr- do the same thing. Yeah. That was really one of the driving forces that kept that league alive was Sarge who did the Dragonfire Weekly, which was a write up, you know, talking about the previous week's games, talking about the matchups, had a power breakdown of how the teams were throughout the season, looked into the future to see who would win, uh, talked about people who died. Role play, role play, role play. That's the name of the game on that. Is it was immersive. It was a ton of fun. It made you really like we would joke about, you know, oh man, you know, you're on a three week losing streak, or, you know, Micah Silversmith, you know, picked you to win, so obviously you're going to lose that type of stuff. (laughs) Right, yeah. Um, And also, we had a Delphi forum, which we would post on all the time. So we would, you know, Before Facebook was a thing, we had Delphi Forum, which we would log into. We'd chat back and forth about stuff, about events, about whatever. And we'd post stuff in the manner of our players or coaches. Yeah, I mean, there'd be a press release from the Campbell Mm -hmm. Claymores. There would be... I would have a Monday night matchup write-up for the front. And we'd see our logos with the stats. It was good... 
it really helped add to the flair and the fluff of the yeah. league a lot. And I'm sure a lot there's a lot of websites out there that do that too. And I wish there was a easier way to do it. Like the OBBLM that is out there online Blood Bowl League Manager. It's really good. It's good. But it's not exactly what I want. Right, because And I'm, I'm too lazy to create my own, so oh, I can't know. gripe. We don't know enough. Yeah. Well, and I yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I Yeah. I guess I'm too lazy and I don't want to like pay somebody like Brad Wells to like reconfigure something for yeah. me. Yeah. And really nowadays with Facebook are we really going to log into some other place and chat? Yeah, it's just But it did add for a lot of the fluff cuz like I said, it it, when I made up the schedule, I'd always do a Monday night game. And we'd act like it's on cable and, you mm-hmm. know, just all these things. And we named our coaches. It wasn't like Brian Hill's team. It was like Brian Hill's the player, but what's your coach's name? Mm-hmm. And like, I remember at one point, Brian fired one of his coaches, you know, I to had get one a new of my coach. Eaton. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. And I had, uh, yeah, I had my assistant coach, Delzine, <laughs> get eaten for our, our fluff thing to, mm-hmm. to name an award and stuff. So all of this has been created always with the idea of it's more than just a strategy game with dice. Yeah. It's like at the core of it all, yes, it is, but we always have added fluff and it's just added so much to it because if you're new to blood bowl, name your players because there's been many instances where Steve, I know will go like, Oh God, I got to try to pick up the ball with this guy. (laughs) He's terrible. It's like, no stat wise. He's good. He's like, no, but he's not. And we go well, through this remember, over and over and over again. It's we still so much remember fun. the characters. Like my, I could tell you Bobo. Yeah. And who's Bobo? Yeah, he's the off runner. And what was he known for? Uh, always throwing, always going down. If I remember yes. correctly, anytime he threw a block, no matter what, even with block, he would somehow end up screwing himself and going down. Yes, and it's insane. You had a cross. While your board. other one was always reliable, Yogi was amazing. Right, Bobo was terrible. He would never fail me. But Bobo and I had a Croxagor that I I had you this renamed. cool name. His name was Ragnarok, kind of like the the term Ragnarok. He mm-hmm. was going to be this badass lizard guy. And he was so bad. The dice. He was just snake bit all the time on the dice. No matter what he did, he eventually broke his like ankle and had like a minus one movement. And I just kept him. And I changed his name. His name turned into Croc of. He was from the city, C H I T E, crock of shit. Mm-hmm. And he was terrible. And yet, like, we kept, we were, we we're also very stupidly loyal to a lot of players. Um, <laughs> more, than we like, yeah. more than we should be. Cause, so we're bad about that too. But oh my, these, these people, what was Bolifer known for? That guy was. So Bolifurter, um, I read in the fluff. He's that, a Minotaur. Yeah, I read that Minotaurs don't give names when they're born they get names based on their deeds and his first game he fell on a go for it and knocked him he was out for two games or whatever okay um so bowler furter means uh poorly footed or (laughs) something along those lines in norse it's just great though i mean like and these are the things you get when you name your players. Because, exactly. I mean, every team we got like a guy like we really trust who might not have any skills. Or like, you know, like this guy has no star player points, but he's a really good player, actually, you know. Mm-hmm. And we tried to take that in account when like when we did our league. I even did like a little all-star team for each divisions and trying to remember like memories and stuff. In our league, we played 10 seasons. Um, in our league, we everybody pitched in, I think it was five bucks. And so we could buy little plastic trophies for people. I think that added to it, too. We yeah, did a, absolutely. We did an MVP where we took the highest uh, guy from each stat. So the guy who had the most casualties, the most touchdowns, most completions. And then it was random because it was picked by the, the media at that point. They voted. And so you could get the guy who got the most MVPs randomly. It could be your that league MVP. Once. Yeah. Or the annoying. guy who only had the most uh, interceptions, interceptions yeah. which is only one you know, in the league. And these things happened, but it was very flavorful. And it was amazing league that ran for ten seasons. I miss it all the time. And really, really, there is it. a hope that I can resurrect this one day, and maybe with these new rules, with some some friends and stuff like that. But yeah, we added all these blood bowl <laughs> fluff role playing elements, and it adds so much to the game. We noticed that after about 
two or three seasons, it always felt like in week eight, because our seasons were only six or eight weeks long, that somebody died from getting a rock thrown at them. <laughs> so we came up with this whole thing about this guy in the stands who comes out and he's just trying to like kill a dude. Every season, final game, somebody died by a thrown rock. Not even a joke. Not, ex- ex- you know, every season except the last season, I think. Yes. It was, and it was throughout just, the whole time, we never gave him a name until we watched Dino King and yeah. named him One Eye. Yeah, we named him One Eye. You know, we, we come up with fun. Like, I remember I played Steve, his Norse team versus my Lizards. My Lizards were heavily favored. You know, we did random <laughs> skills, too. So if, yeah. before this edition of Blood Bowl with random skills, we just did random skills the old way. Um which, Which there was no old way. We would, yeah, we'll yeah. do. We'll go into that later. But uh, I remember we made this big deal about how Steve had this like magical like armor and and like secret <laughs> weapons and stuff because he killed like what, two or three sources and injured the other ones. In, no, I killed three. It was including awful, including Silly Billy with Sleebly. Uh huh. And the then star player at the stat time. busted another, I think. Yeah, you wrecked my team. Yeah. Like, hardcore. And then, of You course, even had inducements because you got Sleebly. Yeah. And then, you know, Steve comes out on our Delphi forums with this big article about, like, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. We didn't pay anybody, you know, anybody for some magical items. And, and honestly, like, I was so spoiled playing Norse the first two seasons until I won the championship because my armor did not break. Nope. Like, Gary tried to kill Axton Jackson, who was my star player, because he was number two. And he fouled and killed my number 11. But he thought I was using Roman numerals, so he was so happy. I'm like, no, that's not him. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, man, no. It's just, it's just funny, the memories we have from that league. And it's yeah. one of the greatest achievements in my uh if you want to call it a waste of time or a <laughs> wonderful use of time for the game Blood Bowl. And so if you're listening for the first time or if you've been here for years, yeah, you really know that we do love Blood Bowl, even like if we gripe about like, oh, there's a waste of cards here yeah. or there's a misspelling in this rule or this rule makes no sense. It all comes from a, a really And deep... I think that's why we're trusted by Games Workshop to get the items. They know that we love it. I mean, we'll... it, we, we truly love the game and... I think some of the magical stuff about playing Blood Bowl when we did is the game wasn't supported. It was supported, you know, by, what am I trying to say? The community. The community, yeah. The was, community kept alive. This was during the um, Living Rulebook era. Right. Because where... I, I showed you, I think it was our first league season, which we named after, like, the Blood Bowl time period. It was 2508, which mm-hmm. would have been 2008 when we started this. So, And... We can just move on to the next part of our adventure together. Sure. 2011. Yes. We, I guess, probably... (laughs) It feels like 2011 is when I really started, like, looking at the internet different. Yeah. So I had a job to where I was basically sitting in front of a computer for eight hours a day, doing nothing, and I discovered the world of podcasts. One of the podcasts, I was like, I wonder if they have any Blood Bowl ones. And I think it was the summer of 2011, maybe spring or whatever, um, discovered Slurpcast. And now they're a video series that does other stuff. But back then, they were a Blood Bowl podcast. And I really enjoyed it. A lot of fun. A lot of, they had Did a lot also, of star players and was stuff. Was it Tackle Zone as well? And then Tackle Zone was out and 3 Die Block was out. But Slurpcast was the first one I found. Okay. And it was the one I shared to you. <clears throat> and then we started really digging it. And they started talking about, because they did tournament wrap-ups and talking about the big Chaos Cup that was coming up. Right. Uh, Zerb Class was really awesome at that time because, you know, what we did for our league, making up fictional characters and stuff, they took it to the next level of tournaments. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you listen to their podcast and, like, our first time going to, like, Chaos Cup, I remember going, oh, that's uh, that's Frank. They talk about Frank all the time on their oh, podcast. Oh, Zuzu Jeff. There's Zuzu they Jeff. Oh my gosh, look at the. You know, it felt like we were seeing like real life celebrities. Yeah. Because of the way their podcast, you know, they were in touch with the tournament scene. But you just kind of glossed over the fact that we decided to go to Chicago. 
well, for the tournament. Uh, right. I mean, it's, I mean, we had traveled a little bit. We've gone to Dallas. We've gone to Arkansas. You went to Arkansas, right? Uh, or did you for not? the Heroclix? I went to Wichita. I couldn't get away for the okay. Arkansas one, but yeah. I heard the stories. But, you know, we traveled some for Heroclix. And but never now, 12 hours away. <laughs> no. Chicago is 13 hours, 12, 13 hours. Mm-hmm. And you and I were the only ones that were into it enough that we wanted to go to the tournament. I mean, right. it was, it's Chaos Cup. That's in the fluff. That's it, a big tournament. It was at one of their, was, what were they called? The Warhammer? Warhammer Bunker. Bunker. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one we went to. And <laughs> I remember being excited because... Uh, Tom from Impact was making these like Chaos Cup figures. Yeah, and at the time they were super hard to get. They were super hard to get. And they were really awesome. Um, they were very second edition. They were probably based off second edition models. Obviously, well, the, the whole look of based off the Chaos All Stars that right, the all, guy you know made for the magazine and all that. Yeah, the custom yeah. ones for the ma- magazine. And I remember thinking like. Steve, if we go, we get one of those miniatures. It's worth the trip alone. Yeah, and. I meant that because, like, I was so excited to get one Chaos All Star miniature mm-hmm. at the time because there was like you know six other ones before that. I was just like in and awe, and they were all going for sixty, seventy, eighty dollars. Yeah, they were like not you know like I remember being in the car saying like, man, if, even if we just get this miniature and kind of have fun, then it's all worth it. To Maybe me. we can find someone who has some old ones. Or right, there was all this stuff, and <laughs> we show off our cool paint jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we thought our paint jobs were pretty cool until we uh, got to Chaos Cup, and I was like... I was the idiot. I was that guy who showed up with the shirt that had my team logo on it. You did. Because I, the... I had the Campbell Claymores, and I had my Campbell's Claymore shirt, and I was like, see, look, I got my shirt with my team name on it. Ain't I cool? And then you got your butt kicked. Yeah. I got my butt kicked. Yeah, you did better than I did. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I, you did. You came in 19th with the Blackwater Bulls. And this is at the time, see, we didn't stall in our home league. Yeah. And um, if I would have just scored in that last game, I would have won. But instead, I was trying to figure out this stalling thing. Because in like another game, yeah. I scored too early and the guy scored on me. So I was like... I guess I stall one more time. And I honestly, I made the right move because I remember this guy was playing with dwarves. Yeah. He had to like dodge away and dodge through another tackle zone and do some go for it and throw two dice uphill. And he got it all. But he was like, dude, I don't know why you didn't score. He's like, I would only had two plays to, to yeah. score. And that's when I learned like, man, people give up if they have tournaments are different than. Yeah. People leagues. give up with two plays. Yeah. It was like, there's no way I can score. I'm dwarves. I won't even try. And it's like, dang it. it. Was, it was a weird mentality. So, yeah, as we said, we'd played with random random skills, and we'd played with no stalling. And now we get to pick our skills, and stalling is a game mechanic, plus the whole different mentality of people. It was just a weird experience. Yes, people won't. <laughs> I'm not going to chance going for it. It's like, why not? Uh, you have a reroll. <laughs> Me and Steve's uh, playing loose and goosey. Yeah, I ended up going 2-2-2. Two, two, and two. I had two wins to start off, then two ties, and then two losses on the final day, which pissed me off. And one of the games, I got so mad at my opponent because I thought he was cheating me, and it was a rule discrepancy on the timing. And I mean, now he's one of my my favorite people. You know, close this friend, Phil. Phil, yeah. You know, at the time, he probably was cheating you. Well, probably he's he's kind of a he's, douche. Yeah, he's a low down <laughs> rat. But um, now I love Phil. You know, we've hung out, we've gone to tournaments together. It's weird, like. I'm looking at the Chaos Cup website, and I'm looking at all these old photos. And these are people, you know, it's the first time meeting most of these people. But now we are friends with, like, legit most of these people in the, in these pictures. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. And it's weird to be like, we were there, but we didn't know these people at that time. Right. Um, if you listen to old podcast episodes or future ones, I'm going to tell you to clearly, clearly mark your miniatures, whether you're playing with Legos yeah. or little miniatures it's like colors on the bases. Don't give me this. Like the guy with the spike on his shoulder has mighty blow, and the guy who, who has you know three skulls is a zombie mm-hmm. on his base, and the guy with two skulls is a skeleton on his base. Because I played an undead team that I was as a new player, I was very confused. Yeah. Truth is, he would have beat me anyways. But when you think somebody's purposely trying to cheat you, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. You know. So. Right. So. But, 
that's why you're always going to hear me harp on sure. like okay fine play with your little minion monsters but make sure the bases are very clear not the 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 minions with one eye are this mm-hmm. and the minions with two eyes are these i mean clearly mark it so this was our first tournament and since then we have gone to a uh, ton we've not only we each have missed one blood bowl in or, or one, one chaos, chaos cup. cup in the last 10 years yeah, that's pretty crazy. Uh, I went to World Cup last year with some other friends who yep. in Austria. That was amazing. Um, and that that weekend, I think we gave Johnny a demo of our podcast. Or like our first episode, didn't we? Or did no, we talk about it? No, 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 no. Oh, I, I wanted to. I wanted to have the episode done. And to give it to him to get some feedback, but we didn't do that. No. So on the way back, we just talked about it the whole time. I don't even think we for sure had a podcast idea. Well, but we might no, we, both. We had an idea for sure. Okay, I don't. Yeah, I remember that. I know we finalized stuff on the way back, but I don't totally remember. Right. I remember. I, and again, I'm anal. <laughs> I wanted to have something done to present to him because he was the guy that you know we looked up to i truthfully don't remember that but i remember at emailing him and asking his permission if we could do a podcast mm-hmm. like like we needed his permission but <laughs> like no we really respected it was those a smaller guys, community though. back then too it was a smaller community and i didn't want to think like i was stepping on somebody's toes i mean how many a blood bowl podcast have uh yeah contacted us saying you mind if i do a blood bowl yeah, podcast no. like none and so back then also there was i think tackle zone was done Yes, they wrapped up. So there was just Slurpcast and Three Die Block. Right. And Slurpcast was much more f- loose and free flowing. Three Die Block was a lot more stuck up back then what, than it is now. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying they're very no, rigid. No, it was. Um, they were not as funny or goofy. You know, we influenced that. Boy, if, I, I know you're, you're going to get it. feedback from that. whatever. <laughs> That's why I'm trying not to say nothing. When we here. when we switched the podcast <laughs> early on, they got better after that. They know it. Uh, but what I'm saying is, I, I would say we, that when Polly was on Three Die Block, it was more of a a very polished yeah, podcast. Where least. well, we're going to tell you like some episodes we're going to look like we got our crap together, and other episodes we're winging it. And the truth is, is most of the time we're kind of winging it because we've always said like we always wing it. I, I enjoy the podcast where I feel like I'm sitting in the living room mm-hmm. with the hosts and we're hanging out. Yeah. And if you have a bad day, you can tell me about it. Yeah. And if you have a great day and you're excited, you can tell me about it. And we've always tried to do that on this. Like, Well, not the first couple episodes. And then we realized this isn't for us. <laughs> well, at the time, we still thought we were doing that, though. Yeah. I mean, like, we've relaxed even more. So what I was going for, though, was the fact that at the time you had a podcast that was very loose in structure and talked about tournaments a lot that was Lurkcast. you had a rated r podcast and you had a very g podcast right and the g1 was going through they were concerned about tactics and strategy right so we had goofy and uh tournaments and strategy on the other one and we i pushed this on scott i'm like we have to have a niche we have there has to be a reason for us to just add to the podcast instead of just we're two guys who want to talk about Blood Bowl, so let's talk about Blood Bowl. Because that gets old fast. You know, there have been, and this is no offense to anyone, there's been a lot of podcasts that come out, they do a few episodes, and they can't think of anything to talk about, and they go away. Yeah, I mean, that just but happens. that's why we focus on fluff. Even in this, we talk about fluff, but that's where our love comes from. But that's why we try to focus on it. And now we have turned into much more of a um, new stuff coming out and tournaments, but that's because that's what, you know, we're getting our enjoyment out of it, and that's fine. But, but we, we, will tr- we try not to, like... Look at the fluff side of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's why I think the the new rules is... Go read the, yeah. those first 20 pages of fluff, man. It, it is... It's great. It is amazing. It's a lot of retread of the old stuff, but it's great to have it back in the print. Oh, and it's just... A, it's different. A little bit different, and just enough to, like... Oh, it's... It's so wonderful. Yeah, we'll be going over that. If you don't, if you don't have the new rules, go ahead and buy the <laughs> new rules. I don't care if new FAQs come out and you have rules lawyers picking little tiny yeah. things apart. It, it is a still. I still think it's a good book, and despite it's an incredible some incredible value, yeah. just straight off. Um, um so yeah, we so, had. To, I asked for permission because I said I wasn't going to do it without Johnny and uh, Extreme's blessing. 
I was not listening to Three Die Block at the time. And you remember? Yeah, he did. Did because, I? Yeah, because we met Chance there. Well, he, he didn't talk his, to us. Well, I know, but we saw Chance and we knew who he was. Oh, okay, okay. But Drew it wasn't still, there. It still wasn't my podcast at the time, right? Because it was much more technical. Yeah. Um, st- strategy and I liked kind of the goofiness and stuff. I mean, look, we we have come to basically be brothers with Three Die Block. Oh, for sure, we're great friends. I think we're I remember good the friends f- with Zerbcast. I remember but- the first uh, Chaos <laughs> Cup. I saw Drew and I tried to say hi to him, and he was just <laughs> grumpily like passing me off, and I was like, well. I that guess guy's- that guy's going to be that way. And then here we are years later. I've stayed over at Drew's house many times, mm-hmm. talked to him, you know, hopefully at least once a month. And, you know, I mean, anyways, we- I feel like I can tell Drew anything. Yeah, absolutely. He's there for me and he'll yell at me over anything, too. And I never know if he's really mad or if he's uh, playing around, but <laughs> I still love him. And it's probably both. <laughs> no, I think that's. One thing about the, let's call ourselves the Old Guard Blood Bowl podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, there's Blood Bowl podcasts I enjoy listening to a lot. There's ones maybe I don't listen to too often because it's just not my thing or they're talking about my thing. But I'm never going to tell you like, I'm never going to discourage you to go listen to something. No. We've always done that too. We've always said like. Not publicly. Privately, I'll tell you who not to listen to. (laughs) Okay. Well, Steve (laughs) might. I'm just saying like. If there's a new Blood Bowl podcast, we usually tell you about it on here mm-hmm. because we're not afraid to like, oh, they might leave us. Because if, honestly, we used to, but they pop up so often anymore. Well, yeah. I mean. If someone wants us to, we will, though. I mean, I, yeah, I think, I think it's problem. great that the Blood Bowl community is, has grown yeah. and you have choices. And, you know, we might not be your cup of tea, but. That's fine. We're consistently a good cup of tea, I'd still say. Yeah. Um, but a lot. some people don't like fluff. Mm-hmm. I've yeah. heard that before. Like, I. I like to listen to these guys because they're more strategy. They're just like, min max people. And like, I'm like, go yeah, for it. That's fine. I mean, I, I get it. No problem. And I don't complain about people not listening. Period. Be- you know, we talk about we do a podcast. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't listen to podcasts. I'm like, I don't. <laughs> With my job now, I don't listen to podcasts. I can't hardly listen to them either. Now lately, I've been drawing a lot more. Yeah. And so I've actually got to listen to some podcasts and stuff and mm-hmm. kind of catch up and with the latest episodes and stuff. And I'm I miss a lot of voices and stuff. So, Absolutely. Um, it's a uh, it's it's a crazy world how much it's grown in the last like you know ten years now. So you remember where we did our first podcast? We did it over at <laughs> Hooper's <laughs> kind of dominatrix partner's house. I don't know if we ever told people that <laughs> in the garage. <laughs> no, that wasn't the first one. First one was actually in the studio, wasn't it? First one was over at her house. No, that was a later one. That's I don't after know. he left the studio. Uh, maybe I don't remember. Okay. I think. I think we're, pretty, we're old. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Anyways, it's interesting that, because you currently do Task Force Geek right. on YouTube. Right. With Hooper, your right. buddy. And he was there from the beginning as our producer. Yes, this was back when... First few episodes, I didn't have any equipment, so... That's true. The first few episodes were totally... The raw files were you know mm-hmm. recorded over there. And then, you know, then you got the own, your own equipment and we started recording, you know, with yeah. you since the beginning. So you're right. And actually the very, 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 very first even semblance of both down was recorded back on Couch Pirate Radio back in the day. Yeah. That's how, I mean, if you go back and listen to episode zero, that yeah. was recorded and originally uh, released on like the Couch Pirates website. So mm-hmm. kind of interesting. And ours. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we but yeah, still. Definitely just, you know, throwing it out there. So uh, after Chaos Cup, obviously, to kind of like not be super long winded, we came up with the podcast. Um, there was uh, many different names thrown out there. At one point, I wanted one reroll one to be our name, which I fought against forever because I didn't understand it. <laughs> like, I didn't. I just I'm like, it's I don't right. get it. I think I think both down is a great name. I yeah. mean, like it's, it has it, served us. Extremely it's my well. license plate now. <laughs> yeah. So and a tattoo. Yeah. Um, I love it. I think our logo is amazing. You've done that. You've done most of our graphics mm-hmm. from the beginning. Um, and, and part of the podcast thing was, is you know, we wanted to uh, a place to talk about fluff because it's very important to us. Mm-hmm. We saw that going to Chaos Cup, playing other teams that didn't have team names, or it was just really crappy names, and you're like, come on, dude, aren't you going to try? Um, Do you remember who won the first Chaos Cup we went to? Was it the Angry Birds with Frank Bradford's team? Sort of. That's what you remember it as. 
It's the Fargan Angry Birds. The Fargan. Well, still, that's terrible. And then Schmidt's Evil Incorporated, yeah, Blood are... Orcs, Manderbeard's Hose, yeah, all these Dead Airheads, Valhalla's Einhard. That's probably a good one. Dirty Dodging Darlas. Yeah, these are all terrible. Ragnar's Ravagers. Uh, that one's okay. Um, Rulik Rampage. Okay. Fun Dead Lupine Edition. Nope. Terrible. Okay, I played that that's team. Tim, Anyways, Santa's Claus. Yeah, the, terrible team names. Yeah. So we wanted to really incorporate the fluff that was also a niche not taken. And there's a lot of fluff to talk about in Blood Bowl. Mm-hmm. Like we could do this infinitely. Um, and and to promote tournaments because we still had that hero click desire to run some tournaments every now and then. And that's and we did. I and mean, that's we, where Oklahoma Bowl came from. Um, after the Oklahoma Bowl series, we did Nuffle Ween series. So. Um, what was Oklahoma the other one? Bowl was February. It was January. It was, was January. it January? It was January. Uh, January of 2012 was when it started. Okay. I think we had 20 people. Something like that. Something like that. But it, yeah, it was. We we went to Chaos Cup and we had plans. I we had plans, and then once we experienced it and saw everything, we're like, "Yep, let's finalize it. Let's do it." Oh, Chaos Cup was definitely the thing of like. I definitely want to do tournaments. I believe what we can offer, we can do good tournaments and maybe build up our community. And, mm-hmm. and it worked. I mean, like, Absolutely. If, if you're out there running tournaments and you say, I had 12 people the first one, and then the second one I had eight, we get it. Because I believe yep. the second Oklahoma Bowl had 16 or 14 people. Yeah, we went down in numbers for sure. We went down. You just got to plug away, be consistent, and... You know, here we are. We and we've have done a podcast to support it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't hurt. Right. Um, what are we at? We for nine years now we've run Oklahoma Bowl, and hopefully we'll get the tenth one in. But I don't know. No, we're not. Not this year. You don't think so? No, not not a chance. Oh my gosh! I, I don't believe Steve because I still want to run a tournament. We'll see what happens. I mean, if we if we do, it might we be don't late. have anything to give away. Well. And it's going to kind of be a crappy. Well, Oklahoma let's not Bowl make 10. this a downer, Steve. You're, you're okay. ruining my Christmas vibe here. Well, we can actually talk about that in the next segment too. Okay. Um, is there anything else we want to tell people about us? Um, because if you listen to the podcast, you've gone through a divorce. We've gone through a tornado. We lived together for five years, and now yeah. we're not. So life changes. We bring that up. We're not afraid to talk about stuff. Uh, no, not at all. You guys probably know more stuff about me. I, <laughs> and this is the whole thing. Oftentimes that... people will tell me something that I forget I say on this podcast. and go, remember that episode when you said this? And mm-hmm. do you still need this? And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> um, no, I think we're pretty transparent for yeah. the most part. Um, you know, we're normal people. We have good days and bad days. And it probably sometimes shows on the podcast, you know. Like. And I will say, we've had people write into us. Obviously, any podcast is going to have people write into you. We encourage that. We love hearing from people. Make sure it's oh, both down podcast at gmail dot com because whoever has both down at gmail dot com refuses to get back to me. <laughs> um, but I'm the one usually replying, or I tell Scott to. People are surprised we actually reply. We're like fast. I replied fast to one guy, and I'm like, yeah, I'm just sitting at work. Saw your email come in. Why not? So we're not unapproachable. We want to talk to you. If you like the podcast, let us know. We'll, even if it's just, hey, man, you know, we're really glad to have you doing it or whatever. We do this for you guys. So, In a lot of ways, sure. Yeah. Um, if yeah. nobody was listening, we wouldn't do this. Oh, no, no. But it probably wouldn't take a small handful you say and you listen probably is enough to fuel our yeah. our, our little filthy egos. But literally, like, if if we didn't have people listening, we wouldn't do, put the time and effort into this. No, I remember when I was very excited that we got 100 downloads. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was like, Steve, we don't need any more. This is amazing. I'll do this forever. We have 100 people downloading mm-hmm. this episode. and But feedback is nice. And, like, even the bad feedback is really good. Um yeah. Because Unless, it allows us to at least for a moment go like, is this person being a jerk? Yeah. Or are they being honest? And I think that's how you should view all feedback is and, like really listen. Mm-hmm. And if it's true, then and if it bothers you, fix it. And and it not, also depends on if it's constructive or not. Sure. Like we had someone tell us he didn't like us cussing back when we started cussing. And I'm like, well, I understand your position. You would like to listen to some entertainment that is clean for your family to listen to. However... 
we're not going to change who we are. We don't excessively cuss. I mean, this episode I didn't make an effort to try not to cuss. It just naturally right. hasn't happened yet. <laughs> we're not extremely foul mouthed that we're going to drop it every five seconds. No, but we'll have a phone episode. Usually it takes <laughs> one of us going on a tangent, and then we all start following the, the dirty path of the goblins. So. Or it takes Drew getting on the microphone one time. <laughs> Drew's the best. <laughs> You guys might think Drew's a oh, I can cuss really here. nice bam, guy. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> you take the gloves off. He loves to cuss. Um, no, I think this wraps up a lot of us. You know, like we're just two normal guys. I love at tournaments when people come up. I mean, it probably doesn't show because I'm mad at like Blood Bowl games, <laughs> not actually people. But mm-hmm. when they say like, "Hey, I listen to your podcast. I love it." Inside, man, I am like glowing. And, and I it, try to be very forthcoming, but I'm like, I have the stone face where people never know if I'm happy <laughs> or sad. Steve's only happy if you hand him a, a product of Blood Bowl that's still sealed. I will take cash. Come on. <laughs> well, Steve will. He's he's easier to bribe than me. Um, Steve has to buy the. Equipment. Anyways, it's it's. It's really fun and endearing to hear the yeah. good. And it's still, even to hear the bad, that means somebody cared enough and likes us enough to, like, yeah. r- write in. And like, like that viewer that said, like, we cussed too much at yeah. the time. We probably had a couple episodes that cussed too much. And I and I get it. And um, also, like I said, if he didn't care about us, he would just turn it off. Right. He enjoyed listening. He wants us to change. And unfortunately, that's just not something that we were going to do. Now, we may have pulled it back a little bit. But, uh, I don't even know if we've tried. We just try no. to. We really do try to be ourselves. And yeah. Some days it's the bad part of ourselves, and some <laughs> days it's the good stuff of ourselves. So. And luckily, we both like to talk, so that helps. Uh, well, some of us are long-winded for sure. <laughs> um, does this wrap us up? Yeah. I think if we've anyone... introduced everybody, and you know, like as further episodes go, we're going to try to talk a little bit about like some maybe kind of like team-focused fluff. Well, but we'll next talk segment. about that segment. Oh, next segment. Yeah. Okay, you're right. But yes, if you have any questions about us, obviously we don't want to give you our socials or anything, but you're welcome to ask. We can address it on the podcast. We can just address it in person. We don't care. Whatever. Yeah. All right, we'll come back. <laughs> we'll just come back, Steve. <laughs> I was waiting for something. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. And we're back. And I really forgot what we were going to talk about. <laughs> That's why I was looking oh, at you, man. buddy. I swear. We're going to talk about the future, right? It's Is like doing right? a podcast with a goldfish. Kind of, sometimes. Although I realize I don't forget things scientifically. Where am I, I at? Need. What? Where's this room? Yeah, thanks, Dory. <laughs> um, yes, the year that was and the year that is to be. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So is that what this is? We're going to yeah, talk about the look, future? I look back at the year of 2020 and kind of talk about stuff in the future um okay just a quick thing all right i mean this is one of those times folks where we told you we don't have show notes we don't have any clue (laughs) it was just kind of a broad concept like we need two segments so here we go um i mean i think 2020 has been interesting obviously we started the with we'd had oklahoma bowl yes that's the last tournament that i went to you went to chaos cup i went to chaos cup but i mean yeah we didn't go to Tournaments this year were just empty. We and were we are so used to traveling around to all yeah. these tournaments and meeting people and hanging out with people and just like I, I just enjoy I, going out and seeing stuff and doing stuff. I mean, I've said this before. Um, if you listen to the Chaos Cup episode, I mm-hmm. probably sound semi grumpy with all the situation, but it's the fellow a lot of the fellowship. You can just yeah. I miss you know like. I don't know what the gaming community is like anymore up in Wichita, but you know, for a couple of years they ran some tournaments. Yeah, and for whatever reason, the last couple of years, I know families grow, people have babies, stuff like that. Anyways, I'm not complaining. I'm no, just no, saying, no. like, I miss those trips to go to Wichita. Yeah, because that's a two hour away day that I can go spend and hang out with some friends I don't get to see too often. I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> Blood Bowl's been a great blessing over the years because we have so many people that we like to see, even if we don't see them all the time, we still feel connected to them. I missed going to uh, Iowa this year. Oh, so you know, much. Uh, did I miss playing uh, Three Die Blocks tournament? Not at all. 
Maybe not, but I missed hanging out with Chance and Drew and Tim. Anyone who happened to come by and and all those people that usually hang out. We go eat and we say, like, how you doing? And we complain about Blood Bowl and we talk some Blood Bowl and we play some games. But the fellowship stuff Mm -hmm. is what really, you know, I I miss that. Absolutely. Um, You're talking to a guy who hasn't left his house but like five times. Well, I haven't gone to stores basically in nine months now. Yeah, that's crazy. Period. Um, so, yeah, there's just a lot of things we missed out on. And I'm hoping, I'm very hopeful, but I'm also realistic. I don't know if much is going to change next year with the COVID stuff. I'm, it should, hopefully. We'll, we will see. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. And I'm hopeful that by maybe April, May, tournaments will start popping up again, Where especially where I feel confident that we go out. And we travel to these things. I would love to go to Nottingham and go play in the NAF Championship. The NAF Championship. Because we talked about that. Yeah. After World Cup last year, we're like, okay, let's save the money and we'll go to it in next year or the year after. Yeah. Well, the next year didn't happen. And now if the year after doesn't, just. Yes. Um, it's, it's, I would say the future is unclear, but I think it's also in a great place. I think. <laughs> yeah. I think the new rules for Blood Bowl was a pleasant surprise. I still think they're positive. Yeah. I I cannot wait to play multiple, multiple, multiple games and even a season yes. to really figure out, like, do I like the new rules or if I don't? Mm-hmm. The main thing is, is I'm very excited to kind of get a different take of Blood Bowl. Um, you know, different little stats and passing and yeah. A uh, couple of new skills. Some skills go away. We get to test some things out. Um, color me stupid, but I'm really excited. <laughs> that's, that's your new band name. That's a great one. <laughs> color me stupid. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really want to play with the Black Orcs a lot for some stupid reason. Now, yeah. maybe it's because we play tested it and I did... You rolled bad against me and I felt cool doing that. But they're I don't know what a, it is. I put they're the, a good bashy team like a lizard man like an ogre team and they're just a little bit different so it's nice to see them i did put the models together yeah i started putting the models together they're they're not necessarily easy they're not necessarily super hard i will say that like i like some of the orc heads and there's some of them i just don't care for at all yeah um but i still use the variants because i wanted to have every black orc a little bit Mm -hmm. different um i might regret that down the line but um no I'm I didn't think I would get excited for new teams because I've always said we don't need new teams. If yeah. I wanted to quote have a black orc team, I would just focus like all my skills, you just play start player l- points with uh black orcs and goblins, you know, or, or you play a lizard man team just using black orc characters right. and but sinks. I have to admit I'm pretty excited to see how some of this stuff plays out. Yeah. I really am. Um I commissioned you know you know you said we haven't gone to many tournaments but uh, i met a guy at chaos cup who i really loved his paint jobs and i've talked to him and we've become friends and you know i'm commissioning him to do uh my uh, old world alliance team cool and i'm really excited to see how those are painted and i think he's really worried because he's never <laughs> taken yeah. money for a commission but I really think if he does a, even a bad job to him is going to be a great paint job to me and i'm going to be really happy it's painted if, and, it, if it's you, you're not going to paint it. So Right. So it's going to be painted. You know, I, like I said, I, I'm excited because the Old World Alliance now has a tree man on it. So I get mm-hmm. to kind of have everything that I want. So a lot of good things came out of this. <clears throat> I think if you're asking me another good thing about all this, everybody staying at home COVID stuff makes you kind of appreciate. Yeah fellowship and people more than maybe you thought because we've all been those people that go you know screw so and so i don't need them well i saw and then i saw someone mention like i now understand why the roaring 20s were what they were you just took any excuse to go out party and dress up and like yeah because after the pandemic you know you couldn't do that right well now next year or the two years i mean we're going to be going places and doing stuff just just to do 
Oh, take for granted, like for sure. Let's I mean, go. once where we feel all safe enough, like it's like you want to just go to Tulsa for dinner. There's yeah, a tournament you know in Colorado. We can drive all night, make it, play it, and drive back. We're gonna be tired. You yes. want to go? Yeah, I got fifty dollars. Can you spot me the rest? <laughs> yes, let's go. Exactly. I mean, that's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so out I'm of every you. if out of every bad thing, I think if you really look at it and give enough time to reflect backwards, you can say like there's been some positive things over this year. Yeah. Um, I mean, we got. I don't want to say officially sponsored by GW, but they're sending us preview products. Yeah, that that's positive, I right? Mean, that's huge. I've I worked mean, on that for so long. Yeah, and, and it just feels good. It feels like somebody's actually kind of listened to us. It feels like some of these things oh, the in the new, new rules, edition, yeah. maybe somebody listened to us. Um, and maybe more stuff in the future. Who knows? I, you know, I, I don't know what the tournament scene's going to be like, though, for us. Like yeah. you were saying in the last segment about, you know... Maybe like not want, have an Oklahoma Bowl. Like, you want to do Oklahoma Bowl, but obviously, it doesn't make sense to do Oklahoma Bowl 10, which should be a big, giant celebration. Right. I know that's important to you. 10 people, because that's as many people as show up, and I might not even, you know? Yeah, see, that's where if, I'm going to try to, like, nudge you into going, like, but Nuffle's number is 11, the, Steve. It should be really big. See? Oh, look at that face. That makes sense. <laughs> I mean, that, that works perfect. But ultimately, <laughs> but I get the what store might not even be open. Right. and that's it's not that, now. And that's a big deal right now. It's a lot of stores, like my store for sure, where we would run it is not open. You for know? events anyways. Um, it's open for And purchase. I think everybody doesn't want do, somebody to get hurt. They do mail order now. So, Who, Wizards? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, that's all cool. he actually does that now. Uh, I think we've always done it. Maybe he's just now advertising. Oh, okay. Um but um, I'm I'm very excited, and I hope. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, by default, right? If you get to leave your house a few times in the next nine months, it's going to be better than this year, right? It really is. Um, I mean, I'm not I'm not going to complain. I have a great job. I am. I started with a new company, T Tech. If anyone is interested in a remote position or something, hit me up. Yeah, Steve gets to stay I mean, home and I work from home, and I know he loves it. I've been he's promoted happy. twice in one year and now i'm making more than i ever have in my life and i only plan to move up you know well good and i've been going back to school getting all that type of stuff done so it's it's here's i it's been interesting i really (laughs) hope this improves and it's probably not because um recently with the new Blood Bowl stuff, I decided to order some stuff online. Mm-hmm. And I you know, hit the refresh button, and I got uh, in right from as, GW. From GW. Yeah. And I got in right as it refreshed. I put my all my information in within less than one minute mm-hmm. after all that stuff was up. I put in my order to get some dice. They canceled my order. If I was a new player, let's say I live somewhere in a remote area of Oklahoma. Yeah. And had two buddies that play Blood Bowl with me. I would be very, very uh, disenchanted by this. Mm -hmm. I don't know how a place that sells direct to the market where they could make the most money back (laughs) would not have enough product, at least for the first hour or so, for people to order it and get it. Now, this is the first time this has happened with GW, with this release. Okay, is it? I believe so. Where they're not fulfilling orders as they were ordered. So I would like to at least give them the benefit of the doubt that COVID, something happened, they can't get the orders in, who knows. It's still not a great look. That is fair. Because here's the deal. Um, I know like our shop got shorted on Mm -hmm. stuff. Big time. Big time. Uh, You you luckily I still need the books, but that's fine. The books? I'll get them eventually. The oh. actual book books. Oh, okay. Like yeah. the omnibus I got and you. the extra time. I know one shop in Oklahoma City had some product. You went up there and got what we yeah. needed. Our shop itself, even though we ordered a bunch, we got all allocated and we're never going to get it. Mm-hmm. I got my order canceled through GW. And like I said, within a minute, I was you know done, checked out, paid my money. Yeah. And they waited until like two days ago, two days ago to tell me, oh, Here's your refund. That makes me think that they were hoping. Because, like, I ordered something okay. from Forge World. I'll give And them... it's even the Forge World American site, which I assume they have their own stuff. Uh-huh. And it took, I was supposed to have it in two weeks. It took two and a half weeks to even ship. 
Wow. Okay. So, I don't know. All right. Know. Well, let me tell you something. This is my first time trying this. Yeah. I thought I would try it because I was very scared because even our shop guy said, I don't know if we're going to be able to get everything because I've yeah. already heard that we might not. I was just thinking from a new player how this could wreck somebody. And my complaint is out of concern. Yeah. It's not that I need an extra pair of necro dice. I've, I found some. I'm fine. Mm-hmm. If I don't get them, I'm going to live. Um, so if GW is listening, <laughs> just think about that. You Blood Bowl's hotter than it ever has been. Yeah. I mean, that's obvious. They've now dumped money into this mm-hmm. a couple of times. Um, and they're on the right direction. But I tell you what, if I was a new player that wanted to play you know, Old World Alliance or somebody wanted that tree man, I would have been really, really, really butthurt if I couldn't have got one. And I almost didn't get one. The whole reason I had that guy paint Old World Alliance specifically is because I knew the Treeman was coming out. And I told him, like, I'll send you that model to paint later because I'm so excited over the Treeman model. Mm -hmm. And I almost didn't get one. You know, so. um, Anyways, that's maybe my biggest complaint about the 2020 Blood Bowl stuff. Besides, it just sucks nobody can go to tournaments. And I know the whole world's in that same boat. Or leagues. I mean, oh gosh, I miss leagues. I mean, like New Zealand's. I mean, if we were in New Zealand, we'd be all over. Maybe we should move to New Zealand. If they would let us, I would. They'd let I us. Work re- they they have to let us. Yeah, they, you have to be let into countries. Why? Just how it works. You can't just like jump. I don't even know if we can jump fly there. Oh man. Um. All right. If anybody's in New Zealand and you'd like to sponsor <laughs> me and Steve and our families to move over there, like you realize that I do work remotely now. Hey, I could do that. Yeah, you could. And I could just work with you. Like, you can get me mm-hmm. on at your place. And we could both live in New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Isn't that close to Australia? Yeah. So does that mean they're fire-breathing poison frogs and spiders? No, New Zealand's and... much better. Okay. They every... just have a ton of sheep. Everything is evil and poisonous in no, Australia. No, New Zealand's the other side of the coin. It's just beautiful countryside oh. and a ton of sheep. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Sheep, they're cool. Mm-hmm. They're laid back. All right, we're down. We're moving to New Zealand, guys. All right, well, that's 2021 in a nutshell. <laughs> Anyways, I'm positive. I can't wait. I can't wait to see people go to tournaments. I, Yeah. I've also learned to... <laughs> I'm going to complain a lot, but I appreciate Fumble being around to give me an option. While <laughs> I complain about the, it doesn't feel fun because I'm not rolling the bad rolls, even though they probably still would have. Yeah. It feels like I'm getting cheated. I'm very glad that we've had that option. If Fumble's going to move to the new rules, please let us know. Golly, I would, I would love to know that. If we need to donate money, let's just do it. Oh, I would I would do that in a second. Yeah. If they said, like, we need this much money. Like, if they would just read a, a crowdfunding website. But, again, it's they're probably working on iffy legalities anyways. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, whatever. really, we're kind of blessed to even have that option. So, mm-hmm. if you're out there and you're stuck, go check out Fumble.com. Yeah, it's, it's something. It's F-U- M B B L dot com. Yep. And it's a great way to at least get to play some Blood Bowl with your friends. Yeah, here it so. is. Even though like at times it feels like the game flips a coin right before you start and says, You're gonna have bad dice rolls. Yeah. Try to does. work around it. Mm. <laughs> anyway. Or I just completely pitch clear a team just randomly. Oh, yeah, yeah, shut up. Was that me? No, I, I pitch cleared to Chaos or Chaos team. Oh, okay. It was crazy. Anyways. I've been pitch cleared a lot almost. Um I think that wraps it up, though, man. Yeah, we don't really have a whole lot. This Is was... there anything that you're hoping comes out? 2021? 20, like, Blood Bowl-wise? My wishes aren't going to happen. Okay. I want Norse. I want Amazons. I would like Chaos Dwarves. I'd like Vampires. I really want, like, in two years, they just put out a new box set. Rules with new FAQ. You know, updated. <laughs> well, if with I, Amazon if, and Norse. If I had my wish, double sided pitch every year around the front of November. Yeah, not the back end of November, because I think it's hard for people to buy Christmas and a new box set. But I I'm willing so to work. Let's do it in October. Every October, you get a box set that has the updated hardcore rule, just mm-hmm. like this, and it has two new teams in it. Yeah. I would love that. Oh, me too. I'd buy it every single time. I mean, the next one could be Norse Amazons. The Mm -hmm. one after that could be uh, Vampire, Chaos Dwarves. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't care if they match up well. Yeah. And Warhammer does this all the time. Yeah. With 40K and stuff. You have two armies in a box. You're ready to go. And even if it's not a pitch, which I don't know why you wouldn't do it. But, ah, whatever. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I'm excited to see what happens. That's all that matters. Yep. I hope... um... I don't know what specifically I want new. 
maybe some i don't know maybe uh, i think it'd almost be fun to get kind of like a star players book and stuff but also yes my biggest fear is that like every couple of years now we're just going to get a new rules reset and i don't want that to happen i don't think it's gonna be every couple if it's I, I hope four, not. I don't, I, we'll see what happens. I don't know. How about this? Cheaper card sets <clears throat> yes. with the blank cards gone. Yes. That's what I would 100%. Like. I'm in, GW. Let's do it. <laughs> 15 bucks. If you just remove those, I'll buy them all day. For sure. All right. I guess that's going to wrap us up. Um, yeah. We're going to do some hey. shout outs next. If yep. you're new to this, I'm going to make a weird screamy face. So enjoy. It's time for Weird Screamy Face. Shout outs! I don't even know why you said that, but I mean, it works. It's time for shout outs. I know, but the Weird Screamy Face. Uh, it's just it's some, not some... a weird face, it's just a weird noise. I know, but they can think I have a weird face. Well, some people would say I have a weird face. Yeah. Um, so, first off, as always, want to shout out Albert Machado, because he's always writing back. Great guy. Dude, that guy gives us <laughs> feedback more uh, more than anybody. Yeah, him and Sean. Right up there. Yeah, that's true. Sean's like on a daily basis. So, But Sean talks to us on Messenger versus <laughs> emails. Which is fine. Whatever. Yeah. Anyways, um, we had a lot of people write in. Those are a couple of them. As always, if you write in and you want to shout out, we'll happily give it to you. Um, so what's this? We got a Black Orc Down giveaway? Black Orc Down was nice enough. I mentioned that we really liked the present dice that they had. Oh, it so like those aren't for us? No. Oh. No. The, well, this is they, not as fun now, Steve. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been seeing those dice over there yeah. with the candy cane dice, and I was thinking, like, hey, I guess I'm going to get some dice before I leave today. So they did send us, um, and you could probably go back and look on their Facebook, and we'll put it in the notes. They have some dice that look like gold presents with green and red bows really awesome these are cool because i thought they were metal yeah in all the advertisements they look like metal and then i you look at them in the light and you think like oh these pieces are like translucent because you can see through them because they're reflecting i don't think they are i think it's no. the paint finish but i'm not 100 percent sure they're actually really cool so no, it's just super shiny they're I, awesome looking. I think whoever wins these should just say, let Scott keep a pair of these <laughs> because he's such a wonderful podcast host. And uh, also they're going to get a set of block dice and D6s. Is that, that what are... the candy cane ones are? Mm -hmm. Okay. So these are cool too. Yeah, those are block dice. So none of these are for us. None of those are for us. Sorry. Well, that really kind of sucks. I mean, it doesn't suck. They were nice suck. enough to send it. No, it's awesome that they sent it. It's just when you get cool stuff you want to keep. <laughs> It's part of the problem being like a Blood Bowl kind of collector. You think you want everything, and that's, you don't need it. That's why I try to stay out of the third-party stuff. Oh, gosh. I, I try How, to, too, to be honest with you. However, uh, speaking of third-party stuff, oh, yeah, we don't have a... Who wants a giveaway? How do we give the away? I would just say... Just send us an email asking for them? I would say just send us... Uh, give us some feedback. If you're listening to this episode, good, bad, or otherwise, it don't have to be long. Any feedback's good. Okay. Send us an email that's called, uh, you know, whatever episode this is, feedback and or contest. Yeah, contest feedback. There we contest go. feedback. That would be great. Just, to bothdownpodcast at gmail.com. It's good to hear from people, and maybe you've always wanted to say, like, Scott is really annoying. He talks too much. I want more Steve. Mm -hmm. Write us that. Yeah, it's not going to happen, but that's fine. No, that's fine. Uh, speaking of third So part do they get... Do they get all all yeah. of these dice and one one winner? Right? Yeah, we're just gonna do one winner. Okay, so you're gonna get some green cool dice with presents and some red uh, dice that look like presents, and mm -hmm. then some block dice. And, I could uh, break it up into multiple people, but nah, yeah. let's just give it all. It's Santa it's all Claus the same only thing. likes one of you, yeah. And you're probably gonna say Scott can keep some of those present dice, and that'd be really cool. And uh, anyways, good luck. <laughs> uh, so speaking of third party games, W A Games company on facebook i think they go by wa games anyways they're putting out three new teams next year it's a nurgle a salon a halfling team uh it's really interesting because they sent us information about the kickstarter obviously they want it to be promoted but they're also doing like a downloadable pdf with fluff on the teams there's going to be a comic 
So once it comes out in February, it seems like it has a low point to achieve, and the teams shouldn't be too bad. Did you say this is on Kickstarter? Yeah, it'll be on Kickstarter. I wonder if they're going to have a tier where you could just order the comic. That's a good idea. I mean, it really is a good idea because that's... Yeah, I could mention it to them. Now, is this is this really a WA Games company? Um, I honestly, Or is it WA? As far as I know, it's WA. Okay, that's fine. It, it's not like WA, like... Like the orc yelling wah. Right. It's probably just WA. I was just making sure. Yeah, well, let me see. WA Games Company. It's actually at WBF Miniatures Board Game on Facebook. Hmm. That's okay. All right. I don't know what the WA stands for. Well, either way, more teams coming. Probably not Western Australia. It's very nice that they're actually including like some fluff and stuff. I yeah, mean, I thought that was cool because it might capture like new players that might buy this team and then they like, like have no clue, and so this might yeah. encourage them to. And always, it's just nice to have something there to make you like the teams yeah. better. Shout out to Kevin. Is this Kibling? Sure, we'll go with that. Kibling. Um, He's probably Kibling. That makes Kibling. sense. Kibling uh, for the Gridiron Gazette on the NAF website. I will post a link. On the in the show notes for this episode, for you to go link and check it out. I'll be honest; I have not read this yet. Oh, you you will you'll love it. Okay, yeah, I'm sure it sounds fluffy already. So, it's got your favorite team in it. Does it really? Bright Crusaders, for real? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, I'm I'm down. Let's go. They're not my favorite team, but I know. But I I kind of like having like some goody two shoe guys. It uses a lot of the second edition art, which I like. Oh, that's great. Which is what I always do. Uh, Then we have one here for Tim Clark for Blood Bowl merch. Yeah, he sent us an email to tell us about the Blood Bowl merch that is on the Warhammer uh, website, I guess. Okay. It looks kind of sketchy. Like, I mean, it's legit, but it looks sketchy. I don't know how to, (laughs) other other way to say that. Okay. Uh, We have seen it before. We might have mentioned it, but did you, have you seen it? I'm kind of lost, to be honest with you. Uh, Come on over. So this is the this is the website. Okay, so he sent a link for the Blood Bowl merch on the Warhammer website that you think looks sketchy. And well, the stuff looks kind of sketchy. It's not great quality. I'm not trying to. What be a it dude. looks like is what's that company that everybody could make T-shirts? Teespring or something? Yeah, it looks yeah, like that. It really does. Or the like, Cafe Press. Here's a generic shirt, and we're right. just going to throw has your generic logo on model it. with a mm-hmm. white shirt on with the thing on. I mean, it's and here's. Here's posters you can get, which are just pictures that they've had and just the red and blue put on the bottom and top. It's fine. It's fine. If somebody wants something, at least they have that option. And it probably is something like that. And it is. It's fine. I mean, I don't think they have a warehouse sitting around with 40 of those shirts. No. Anyways, there's Blood Bowl merch out there. Thanks, Tim, for letting us know. I'm sure somebody out there... Wants one of those. And actually, if you've ordered these and you've got them in and like it's a really comfy shirt, even though it might have just been made, you know, three hours before you got it. That's fine. I'm yeah, I'm, if, I'm more concerned about that. Yeah. If it's comfy, if it's comfy and it has decent looking quality on here, because they do have like a, some dwarf ones. They got sl- the salon coach, which is really cool with the hot dogs. Oh, that's neat. So, like, it's none of it's new art. It's I'm, all repurposed. I'm more concerned if I buy a 2XL shirt, is it going to stay 2XL after I wash it? Right. I get um, that. I'd like to give a shout out to the Florida Blood Bowl guys. I've probably shouted them out before okay, from way back one. in yeah. uh, Oklahoma Bowl for oh, yeah. the awesome shirt they gave me that says gave Scott us. Prime. Yeah. Oh, you got one too? Well, it doesn't say Scott Prime now. Yours doesn't? No. You should have got a Scott Prime shirt. No, it says Kilowoggy. I like it better. Okay. Well, anyways, uh, I've gotten a lot of compliments because I've been sneaking wearing it to work on casual Fridays. <laughs> like, I think I'd get in trouble because it says Scott Prime on the back, but I just wear my little jacket in. Mm-hmm. And when the bosses go away, I take my jacket off and I haven't been questioned yet. But I've got a lot of people ask me about it and I talk about the Florida Blood Bowl League and how they're very nice, genuine guys who... You know, made these cool shirts. I love how it fits. And I will continue to wear it on casual Fridays until I get told I cannot wear it anymore. So, there okay. you go. Thanks again for the cool shirt. And then I guess the final shout out we have. We actually had a new review on um, iTunes. 
This is cool. This is from Hoseman 606. Or is that Hoisman? I think it's just Hoseman. Hoseman 606. You want me to read it? Sure. Just getting into Blood Bowl. Picked up the orc half of the starter set. I started your podcast at episode 63, which was also a reintroduction, just like we're doing this was episode. It? Uh-huh. I believe Do it was. Do you only remember that because that was your high school football number? Yes, I feel like it's a weird kindred <laughs> magic okay. spirit that okay. we did a reintroduction in uh, 2016. It was number 63 just by chance. It wasn't on purpose, and it was also my high school football number. Um, it's kind of sad that I remember that. <laughs> I started your podcast in episode 63, I believe it was, when you started um, conversing on the new set. There he goes. So that was he 53 said, episodes ago. Yeah, he said, I love it. I am currently working up uh, some fluff for my team. Many thanks. Well, yeah. Hoseman 606, that's exactly why we're doing another reintroduction yeah. today because it might be somebody's first episode. And, and frankly, some episodes you might get for the first time and go, these guys sound like turds or yeah, these fine. guys sound awesome. And we apologize we didn't get to that sooner. We honestly, not many reviews come into iTunes anymore for anybody. Oh, I know. So, for either another other podcast, I mean, are saying the if same you thing. Sa- if you do it, I, we love you. Thank you. Just let us know, and we'll happily shout you out. I'm starting to feel like more and more people are listening, but not through iTunes. Like yeah. it's kind of a, yeah, almost. No. It's just not the format. I mean, everybody used to go to iTunes to listen to everything, and no, more now and more it's so people. much easier on every, every everywhere else. I mean, I the last few podcasts I listened to uh, last week when I was drawing and stuff, I just did it straight from their website. So wow. Oh. Yeah, that's just, cool. Yeah, it's nice to have in the background. So, anyways, uh, you have anything else you want to cover? I can't think. Talk of about, be no. happy about. No, we got the new year coming up, and that'll. Would you like to sing a Christmas song so we could lead everybody out here? You want to sing one? No, <laughs> I'm trying we to could, look, impromptu get Steve to sing a Christmas song. And you want to like... do the David Bowie, uh, Bing Crosby? <laughs> Peace on earth, goodwill to men. I'm a zombie because I'm dead. They're both dead. Come on. Oh, they both are. So you're saying David Bowie comes back as a zombie and Bing Crosby doesn't? <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I mean, it like, is Bowie. I mean, more people would be happy if David Bowie came back than Bing Crosby. <sighs> yeah. I'm sure Bing Crosby's from that old school of where like <laughs> he put women in their place by hitting them, no. and we never knew about this. No. So honestly, talking about that to go off on a. <laughs> tangent <laughs> if you're listening the first time we go on a lot of tangents and I, usually about this time i love bing crosby he's always been one of my favorite singers okay love his movies all type of stuff <clears throat> he had four kids if i remember correctly probably had more because he was catholic it was a big okay. thing one of his kids came out with a book talking about um how bing crosby would beat them as kids and he was a horrible father and every other kid was like the fuck you talking about you you opportunist opportunist little prick like this didn't happen this is all fake all this type of stuff but the narrative is now that he beats his children because that one kid put a book out okay i really didn't hear anything i know (laughs) i was just totally like making that up no no no. it's i mean it's from the early 80s or so huh i did not know this but yeah it just bugs me I got no, he, he seemed like a nice guy. You're cool. He actually, so it it kind of sucks because I don't trust my grandfather, but my grandfather and Bing Crosby used to know each other. They used to go boating together in Catalina or in uh, somewhere in Mexico, wherever it was. Nice. Um, but I found a photo of Bing Crosby with my grandfather, and I could never ask him when I was taking care of him for more information about it because I didn't trust him to give me the right answer. Wow. Because he was... Yeah, you didn't like your grandpa. He was horrible. But... All right. Whole different thing. Okay. Well, to everybody out there, thank you for listening this crazy year. Let's hope that we improve. Absolutely. Be nice to other people. If you don't like the rules of stuff, just just for this, for just a little while, follow the rules. Try it out. Try it out. Uh, my, you know, my sister's family got COVID. And, oh, they did? Uh, if they did. Oh, fun. Um, my dad got it, and he's 83, and he actually pulled through. Um, surprisingly my sister said her kids or her one child she had one kid that had no symptoms mm-hmm. but was they tested po- positive several times 
The other kid was so in disbelief about how he couldn't taste things mm -hmm. that he went and started trying different dog foods for the dogs. And oh. he was just like, Mom, I really can't taste this. Yeah. And he was just crunch up dog food and eat all this weird things. Um, they're all doing well. They've all test retested and they've come up negative. Our buddy Sarge and his wife got it. Yeah. So and it, they got it bad. Well, not, they, not hospital, <clears throat> hospital bad, but like close. Yeah. So... Be safe. Be kind to one another. Thank you for sticking with us. We know like this year's been weird because we went weekly for a little while, and yep. then it felt like every five weeks because we got busy. <laughs> yeah. Once jobs started up again, and then you know, it's just been kind of I, we're not playing and we're not doing. Uh, yeah. Life is really weird for everybody, so we know this. Um, you know, Monday I might go into work, and if uh, the budget's not approved, I'll, I'll go home and I get laid, not laid off, but furloughed right before Christmas. So Most we likely, just don't know. Just and, expect that. I just look 10 days ahead, and if I got enough you know, food in my belly for the next 10 days, I'm, I just take that blessing yep. and move on. And that's, that's another thing 2020 has kind of taught us is, like, you don't have to have your life planned out for six years. You know, just, yeah. just worry about the next week. <laughs> and the next week is Christmas and New Year's. So have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, whatever you believe. We don't All care. those things. Yeah. For sure. So uh, just be kind to one another. We love you. We really appreciate always being with us. You don't realize how often that you guys pull us through things. And I think we don't realize sometimes how we pull you through things. So we're all here together. And thank you very much for listening to Both Down. Merry Christmas, everyone. Howdy ho. You can follow Both Down on Twitter at Both Down. You can follow Scott at Real Scott Prime. And Steve at Kilowog2814. If you'd like to email them, the email address is bothdownpodcasts at gmail.com. Or for more information, you can visit them at bothdown.com or at facebook.com forward slash bothdown. A shout out to Kevin. Hey, hey. You gotta wait until I stop talking. Golly! Now I'm just like I, I can't cut if I'm talking and then you start in. You don't have to gripe at me. I'm not. I'm butt. just trying to tell, I'm trying to get you to stop before you continue on. Man, you all. are channeling Drew Bucci right so. now. <laughs> uh, anyways.